So if you've ever tried to add video inside your Framer project, you know there's only a couple of different things that we can do. We can embed a HTML video, a YouTube video, or even a Vimeo player. But the problem is, if I say drags this onto the canvas, you notice we've got some styling control here, but not a huge amount. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can design and build fully customizable and branded video players all inside of Framer. Let's go. Okay, the first thing you need to do is head to videoframe.io, which is a plugin for Framer that lets you build these custom video players. And you can see we've got a bunch of different components that we can start to just copy and paste onto our canvas to start building. So let's start with the core, which is the video frame component here. We'll go back to Framer and we'll just paste that in. And we'll also grab a link from the internet, which can be our dummy video. Now you can see just in the component here, we already have a ton more settings. Now we can either upload a video by a URL, a file, uh, or even host it on YouTube and Vimeo, but still kind of like override that player branding so we can customize it however we want. So let's just use a link for now. Let's just paste that in and let's just preview that to see how it goes. I might set it to loop and to autoplay. Okay, awesome. We've basically just got a drone, pretty cool sort of video. Uh, okay, so now we can actually start to add some of our functionality. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do here, just for keeping things organized, is actually wrap this video frame component in its own frame, and let's call this video holder. And we'll just set the width and height of this to be auto. So everything kind of fills the box that it's in. Now, by default, this video frame component will be a 16 by 9 ratio, which is by far the most common ratio when it comes to video. But if we want to do square videos, vertical videos, whatever, we can do that as well. So let's just size this up a little bit and let's also make it centered on our canvas. Beautiful. Okay, so probably the first component we want to add is the play button so we can actually control our video. So let's just copy that and head back to Framer. And I'm just gonna paste this onto the canvas. Now, the one important thing to note is we actually want this video frame component to be above everything else within our video holder for it to actually function properly. So this means if I just set the positioning to say absolute and then set that to the center, then it should just work fine. So if I press on play, you'll notice my video is playing and then I can pause that video just like so. And then on my right hand side, down in my component settings, I've got a lot more control over that styling. Obviously we can position this to be wherever we want on the canvas and it will just like work like so. Uh, and this is a big way of how just video frame works. It lets us kind of position things how we want. Therefore we can brand it and design it however we want as well. So let's just leave this in the center of the canvas for now. Uh, and let's start to bring across a few more different components. Actually, what might be handy to do is actually add a nav bar to the bottom so we can actually put all our elements. So if I set this to absolute positioning, set the width to be 100%, and let's leave the height as say 55 pixels for now. And I'm just gonna make that uh, sit at the bottom. And then that means that I can actually use some relative positioning and actually size things properly uh, within this frame here. So let's just call it controllers. And let's make sure that's below my video frame component. And then therefore, if I add my video button to this controller here, uh, I can now use all my layout tools. So it should be pretty easy just to kind of like copy and paste and add more functionality to my controller frame here. So let's take this a step further and maybe we want something that looks a little bit different. So maybe we keep this bar a bit of a gray and let's actually make it so everything is left aligned and let's add our padding like we usually would. Okay, awesome. This looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and copy and paste the progress bar and we'll just paste that onto our canvas as well. And maybe we make this a little bit longer. Cool, let's just test that and see how it's working. Okay, so you can see my progress bar is working. I can pause this, I can even change the uh, timeline on this progress bar as well. Cool, that looks great. Uh, let's also go ahead and add a video time label. And you can see there's a bunch of different things that we can kind of add here that kind of powers up your videos. But let's go ahead and paste this one as well. 
that looks great. Let's style it a little bit more. Maybe we make it uh, a bit lighter. And let's also add the ability for a volume control. Maybe that can be a little bit shorter. And, and lastly, let's also add the ability to make our video full screen. So we'll paste that in here. Okay, beautiful. Now let's style this a little bit further because I want it to be a little bit nicer. So let's just add these as a stack together. And let's add these three elements as a stack together. And we'll set the width to be auto. And now inside my controller frame, I'm just going to set the distribute to space between. So everything gets pushed to the left and the right. And I reckon from a UX perspective, let's put this full screen at the end here. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Maybe this is a little bit too tall. Let's preview this and test it out. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. We've got our timeline, our pause button, we've got our uh, time code here, and we've even got a slider to control the volume. So as a custom video player, this is already looking pretty cool, but we can actually take this a step further and customize it a little bit more. And like I mentioned, there's some more functionality that we could add in here. So say if we wanted to do picture in picture or even a restart button, we can always add that. But the really great thing about this and because everything is kind of controlled with components and just native sort of frame of language, it means we can actually animate this as well. So let's say if we took this video holder and create it as a component, we can actually animate between different states. So let's add a hover state here. So we only wanna show the UI when someone hovers. Like you're watching a Netflix video, you kind of hover to pause the video and then all the UI sort of shows up. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, take this controllers and let's just set the opacity for the initial state to be zero. And let's actually move it down a bit. And because everything is set to absolute, this should be fairly easy to do. Let's set it down to be 55 or 50. Perfect. And then when I hover, I wanna show that UI. So we'll bring it back up to 100% opacity and we'll set it to be zero from the bottom. So now when I actually preview this, you can see the video is playing. I hover over the video and now I have my full controls and then I can pause it or do whatever I want. Now you could imagine how we could technically even take this a step further. So I can make it that maybe when I click on the plate on the pause button, maybe it shows some text with some more information about the video. Uh, this can go very, very far. But as you can see, just building a real simple custom video player, this is really simple to do and it looks great. And that also means that because it's inside a framer, we can do the same with any breakpoint. So if we want to have different sort of functionality or sizing on uh, mobile, we could do that. So a use case is like, okay, we'll have a video be horizontal on desktop, and then maybe we squish the video down and make it vertical on mobile with some different sort of UI and functionality. Now, the other really cool thing that you can do that I want to mention is, let's say you're doing a lot of this content and you wanna connect it to your frame of CMS, you can do that as well. So you've actually got the option to tie it to a variable or something like that within the CMS. Now, quick action, if you wanna learn more about how to use the frame of CMS, you can watch this video here. But apart from that, that's how you can create some really cool custom video players inside of Framer. All you need is videoframe.io. I'll add some links in the description so it's easy to get to. Now, if you like this content and you want more Framer videos like this on the channel, feel free to subscribe because we are putting out more content every single week. And like I mentioned at the start of this video, I'm so pumped to be back and just to give you guys as much Framer content as I can. So. Plenty more coming towards the end of the year. But until next time, I'll catch you later.